Hello, Bullfiles! Today, I'm doing a little bit different kind of video. I'm going to talk about what to do when you don't have an ideal read, because guess what? I'm on the road, and I haven't been able to make a really great read. I'm not used to making read at this, reads at this elevation, um, and I only had a couple days to, um, well, really one day, to make the read, and then I had to play the audition the next day. So, so I'm going to talk about that, and then also give a little bit of an update on what I'm working on right now, and kind of just do a little bit of an old school vlog. <laughs> I've been taking a few auditions lately, I'm going to be taking a few more in the future and hopefully keep taking them until I am, you know, winning one of these, um, but it's a long road ahead and especially, it's been a long journey from <laughs> learning how to walk, giving up the oboe, coming back to the oboe, learning how to make a read again, learning how to play with your mouth and wind and body again after, you know, really losing control um, of your body, which is kind of a weird thing to to imagine, um, but I feel really good now that I'm like taking auditions again and feeling like I'm getting more and more in shape both on the oboe and mentally for these auditions, which I think is really important. And I just want to talk about that a little bit. Um, so I came up here to the mountains to take this audition, and it's super high, and you know, it's not the best read in the world, I'll just play a little bit so you can hear it. Okay, so the reed has some issues. Uh, number one, it just doesn't vibrate as much up here. I just take a lot out of it, and I'm not used to balancing reeds that way. Um, I'm not going to make another one because I'm going to leave in a couple hours or I guess in like 10 hours. So um, I don't want to have to, you know, just make a read just for this afternoon. I'll just plan this one. I think it's okay. And I think the thing to remember when you don't have the best equipment, you know, your oboe might go out of adjustment, is to try to just show the musical intention. If you can show the musical intention, your equipment will be less noticeable and just be really bold and out there with your own personality and your own musicianship. Um, the rest of the stuff that you've trained into your body should be reflexive at that point. And your body will adjust surprisingly if you're not so worried about the equipment. You know, I've had some adjustment issues, some of the notes aren't speaking even, um, but I'm trying to really encompass that, uh, that kind of advice somebody gave me recently. Um, and I think it's easy to lose sight of that. I lost sight of that, certainly. Um, I was all in my head for the audition, and I'm not sure it went as well as it could have, but I'm hoping that the next one will go better if I remember that. And for you guys, hopefully that information or that kind of advice is useful. Kind of in that vein, I've been trying to grow mentally and academically in my music career, apart from the physical instrument and practice time. Um, part of that is just like reading books. So I like to read novels, obviously, and kind of inform my humanity in that way and experience life. Uh, ran a 10K out in the snow yesterday, so that was super fun. Um, and just doing stuff like that really like gets you in touch with the earth and with humanity and allows you to make music in a more genuine and honest way that's not so bound by you know the physical limitations you might be having at the moment or the limitations of your instrument, which for us old players unfortunately never ends, so I'm hoping to get more control of that. But one of the things is I've been reading a lot. So I got these two books from the library, and one of them is called Foundations of Oboe Playing, Practical Tips. I've talked about this book before. I don't actually own a copy, but maybe I should. Um, but I like to read it from time to time and kind of reinform my fundamentals practice and talk about how to play the oboe because it's easy to lose sight of that. The other one is called uh, Oboe Motions by Stephen Kaplan who talks a lot about Alexander Technique and how to approach the oboe in a more natural way. It reminds me of uh, Emmy Remington from Eastman. I never met the guy. Uh, he's like generations past me, or before me. But, you know, he had the saying that was, the trombone is the most natural instrument in the world to play as long as you approach it naturally. And I think that's true for the oboe as well. I think a lot of us, myself included to like the highest degree, started playing the oboe without anyone really looking out for how we were using our bodies besides like the tips of our fingers and the mouth that was actually contacting the oboe. 
but you really want to approach the elbow in a natural way to where you're standing well, you got strength in your body, you're not doing anything that's using muscles that are too small uh, to do big jobs, you know, you want to use these big muscles and breathing the correct way, being flexible with your hands, never rigid, um, but strong. And I think that in my own teaching, I try to incorporate that and I never feel like I do enough of a job. I still have students who come in with really terrible habits, even when I've started them, and I feel like it's because I don't get to remind them every day. It's important that you remember every single day to approach the instrument with the goal of not having any pain or tension. The oboe is hard enough without us making it harder with reeds that are too heavy or too flat or an instrument that's out of adjustment or an instrument that simply doesn't seal. So get a working instrument, working reed, find a teacher who can help you. I'll have these books linked in the description below, um, my website you can find reeds and stuff, and I hope that helps.